it's Tobias and Robert from Fresh Holistics. Today we got a special guest, Josh Rubin of East West Healing and Performance. We're going to talk a little bit about nutrition, specifically the details or the harmful effects of polyunsaturated fats. So Josh, can you tell us a little bit about the basics of what polyunsaturated fats are and what they're commonly found in? Well, having the word basic and polyunsaturated fat in the same sentence is an oxymoron. It's almost impossible to get basic when we talk about unsaturated fats. But PUFAs stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids. PUFAs are typically found in a lot of above ground vegetables in small amounts, more than below ground vegetables. Uh, nuts and seeds, vegetable oils, nuts and seed oils, um, you know, peanut butters, canola oil, safflower oil, flax oil, all those different things. And it's also found in fatty fishes. Now most people, most doctors, Dr. Oz, most Western medicine claim that unsaturated fats are actually non-inflammatory or they're anti-inflammatory. They actually can help reduce inflammation. Well, if you look at unsaturated fats, well, if you look at our society, we have to think about and say, well, you know, instead of trying to take something that's going to actually reduce inflammation, let's eliminate everything in our life that's causing pro-oxidation or it's causing inflammation. That'd make more sense if you ask me instead of taking a supplement. And at the same time, most people are putting these things in their mouth without even investigating what these things really do. And I think we're just perpetuating illness by doing this. We have to really understand what we're putting in our body. And most people don't, because if you did the research and you studied the work of Ray Pete, and you studied all the different people, even our work, you know, on our website, our YouTubes, our Facebook, our program, the Metal Health Blueprint, you'd see that in a small amount, in a homeostatic state, our body actually produces omega-9 fatty acids, which is an unsaturated fat. It does this from oxidizing sugar and from saturated fats. So we're using or producing energy in an efficient state. We're actually producing our own omega-9 fatty acid, which is actually anti-inflammatory. In a small amount, though, the one problem with taking omega-6 and 3 fatty acids or eating all these oils and eating all these vegetables, etc., is you actually, I'll simplify it as best as I can, to make the omega-9 fatty acids, you need certain enzymes to make them. When you take omega-6 and 3 fatty acids or essential fatty acids, which they're not really essential because you produce omega-9. So how, how could these omega-6 and 3 actually be essential? We produce our own essential fatty acids. When you take all these oils or supplements, you actually take away the enzymes that you need to produce omega-9 fatty acids. So you actually stop your body's own production of your anti-inflammatory unsaturated fats that we normally produce are actually doing your body more harm. At the same time, if you look at unsaturated fats, yes, in a small amount, they are not, they're anti-inflammatory. But in excess, they're actually pro-inflammatory. And that's the thing that people are not getting because everyone's promoting eat salmon, take omega, you know, take omega-3s, take omega-6s, mm -hmm. you know, essential fatty acids, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. The problem is, in excess, especially the state that most people are in, they're hypometabolic, they're hypothyroid, their body temperature is 96, their pulses are 40 to 50 beats per minute. It's actually going to do more harm and push you further into the hypometabolic hibernation state that you're actually in. So from my standpoint, studying the research, looking at unsaturated fats in foods, in the physiology in the body, I don't agree that they're actually anti-inflammatory. I actually agree that what our society is doing is it's actually causing more inflammation from using these fats, um, which goes against almost everything you read. But for me, it's the su success I get with myself and my clients by trying to increase the ratio of saturated to unsaturated fat and trying to decrease the amount of unsaturated fats that people are taking in because they oxidize. Um, they, of course, do a million and one things in the body, but um, they're just, for me, they're just not beneficial, if that sums it up mm -hmm. in a... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, Josh, do these polyunsaturated fats have an effect on the thyroid as well, and other dangerous effects? Yeah, I mean, you can't Besides eliminate... inflammatory... Yeah, I mean, you can't eliminate them completely from your diet, because they're everywhere. Yeah. But our goal is, of course, looking at the right types of digestible carbs, the right types of proteins and the right types of fats, we're trying to increase the saturated to unsaturated fat ratio. Okay. You know, an example is we like tropical fruits that are ripe because yeah. tropical fruits, like a coconut, they grow in a hot climate. Yeah. And they have a higher saturated to unsaturated fat ratio among having sucrose in them, which is super beneficial for energy production and cell metabolism. 
So right there, we're increasing the saturated to unsaturated fat ratio. We're eliminating above ground vegetables. We're eliminating nuts and seeds and all these different oils and fatty fishes. Right. So we're trying to increase that ratio. That doesn't mean you want to just eat coconut oil all day, but we're trying to increase that ratio because saturated fats are actually anti-inflammatory. I mean, our cells are even in an embryo state. They actually have more saturated fat in them. The problem is when we get inflamed. Um, and we're eating all these, you know, unsaturated fats, these polyunsaturated fats. Our cells kind of swell. Unsaturated fats have a high affinity for water. So they, in a simplistic sense, kind of work their way into the cell, and now saturated fats actually work their way out of the cell because the unsaturated fats have a high affinity for water. And when anyone is inflamed, your cells fill with water, they fill with estrogen, they fill with calcium, which actually makes your cells start, instead of converting glycogen to glucose to produce energy, you convert it to produce lactic acid, which is inflammatory. So, I mean, there's a million and one things. I could sit here for eight hours and talk to you about it, but from a hormonal standpoint, if we simplify it as best as we can, if you look at a saturated fat, hot temperature, it's liquid, cold temperature, it's hard. Unsaturated fats are exactly the opposite. They're hard under hot, like, I should say, they oxidize or get hard under hot temperatures, and under cold temperatures, they're actually more liquid, like a salmon, a fatty fish. They need to be flexible in cold water. Just like above-ground plants have cellulose yeah. and unsaturated fats, it keeps them flexible so they can germinate in early spring. It's actually their own internal toxin as well. So from a hormonal standpoint, we're putting it in a body that's heat and oxygen. So right there, we create oxidation. Back in the day, they used to use fish oils and things like that in paints. They used to use it in paints. The problem was, once you open the paint jar and it was exposed to the air... If you closed it back up, it was almost impossible to open. So at the same time, we're putting it in our body. It's creating oxidation and it's heat. So when we eat it, one thing that it does in the digestive system is it actually blocks proteolytic enzymes, which is part of your immune system. But the very thing you're eating, like edamame, these nuts and seeds and oils, the very food you're eating is actually blocking the proteolytic enzymes in your small intestine from breaking it down. This is why most people see... A lot of above-ground vegetables in their stool, or nuts and seeds in their stool, when they have GI issues because you can't digest them because of the cellulose and the unsaturated fats. From a hormonal perspective, it's huge. Unsaturated fats almost have the exact same reaction in the body as does estrogen. Wow. Now, everyone needs estrogen. It's not that it's a bad hormone. It's finding the balance between progesterone and estrogen. Yeah. That's the important thing. But most men and women have issues detoxifying estrogen. They could have low progesterone. It's rare that you see an excess of estrogen and a low progesterone or an excess of estrogen. It's usually you have the inability to detoxify it. So they have the same action. You increase your amount of unsaturated fats, you're increasing the amount of estrogen. That can waste B6. It can create hypoglycemia. It downregulates T4 to T3 conversion, increases aromatase enzyme, which increases estrogen production. Um, it's just endless. Come on.